everyone. It's Friday. You know, if you've watched for any length of time what I do on Friday, I got to invite you to church. Why? Because it's the highlight of the week, or should be, for all of us who are followers of Jesus. If you have your own church, I praise God for that. Be sure you attend. Don't cheat yourself. Don't cheat them. The fellowship of the body of believers is not complete if every one of us is not a part of it. That's the plain and simple truth. If you don't have a church home or maybe you haven't gone to church in years or since you moved, some people always went to church and then they moved to Laguna Woods and stopped going. That is not uncommon. I want to invite you to Saddleback Church, Laguna Woods, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock in Clubhouse 5 right here in the village. And so you'll see your friends or your soon-to-be friends there. And as we share a continental breakfast with coffee and tea uh, together prior to the service. So I hope you come on out. Or don't cheat yourself out of worship. All right. Well, today we're finishing this sermon by Pastor Stacy Wood as she was speaking on suffering well out of the 23rd Psalm. I thought this sermon was spectacular. We have a very interesting week for you next week. All right. God bless. May this sermon bless your life, and I hope to see you on Sunday. The other piece of advice that Pastor Buddy gave was, was first prayers, first minute prayers. So the first minute of your day, turn it back to prayer. The first minute that you get in the shower, turn it back to prayer. The first minute that you get in the car, the first minute that you're walking down the hall to go to a meeting, turn those first moments back to prayer to reprioritize in your heart. God, I wanna remember you. I want to bring you along with me in every sphere that I'm in all throughout the day. The second thing that I would love for you to think about is just to repent of any sin that when it comes evident to you, just repent. I, I, let me ask you a question. If you did invite Jesus along with you, and let's say he's in the flesh, okay? So let's say he's in the flesh with you all day long, just following you around, doing life with you. Do you think he might have any feedback for you? Like, do you think that as he observes your life, he might be able to offer a suggestion or two? Like, when he does that, when he convicts your heart, when he brings sin to mind, just agree with him. Just say, you're right. I could have done that differently. I should have done that differently and I'm sorry. And next time I want you to help me to do it differently. The Bible says that when we hear God's voice, don't harden your heart, but yield to him. And you know what that does is it helps you to get reconnected in your relationship with him because sin has a way of blocking the flow of that relationship. But this reconnects you to the source, to the vine, to say, I want that river of life to flow through my life. And when we repent of our sins, when we confess them back to God, that's exactly what it does. It restores relationship. And so the Bible says that if you will confess your sins, 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and he is just and he will forgive you of all unrighteousness. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's his promise to you. So you don't have to be fearful when you mess up that you have an angry dad that's about to smite you. No, he wants to forgive you. He wants to have relationship restored with you. But it takes a level of humility that is uncommon in, in our day and age. Because we live in a day and age where we always try to cast the blame to get it as far away from me as I can. I, I'm not guilty of that. That wasn't my fault. That was so-and-so's fault. But he says, no, only the humble find their way to the feet of the Savior. Only the desperate make their way to the feet of the Savior. Only those who are willing to admit that they are dependent and in need of a Savior will come and confess their sins to me. But when you do, when you confess that sin of self-sufficiency, when you confess that that was a harsh way to speak to someone, you will find arms of love open wide to you because he longs to receive you and restore relationship with you. So repent. Whenever sin becomes evident in your life. And the last thing is to return. Return to the Lord when our hearts wander. How many of you 
have purposed at some point in your life to sit down and pray and your mind was just like a pinball machine bouncing around and you couldn't focus and you, and you wanted to, you had the best intentions, but you just couldn't do it. How many of you have tried to live a certain way or to honor God in a certain area of sin that, that used to hold you in bondage and you purposed in your heart, I'm never doing that again. But then lo and behold, you find yourself back in that same pit again. The invitation is always to return. Return to your father who loves you and who wants to welcome you home. Friend, if your mind wanders a thousand times in prayer, that is a thousand opportunities for you to return back to your father. There's this verse in Psalm 119 and it says this, I strayed like a lost sheep, but seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your command. Can you imagine this little sheep? And he's just doing his thing, eating the grass right in front of his face, head down, doing his thing. And he just wanders off from the shepherd. He just wanders off from the flock. And he never really meant to do it. He was just so focused on the grass right in front of his face, but he just wanders off right into a thicket full of thorns and he gets stuck there. And he realizes it and he, he looks up and he, how did I get here? And I can just imagine that sheep calling for his shepherd. Shepherd, shepherd. And he's straining his neck just for a glimpse of his shepherd. And he says, seek me, seek me because I'm lost and I'm stuck and I wanna come home, but I don't know the way back and I need you to come and get me because I haven't forgotten about you, shepherd. I haven't forgotten your commands. I know that in you are the words that hold eternal life and I wanna come home, but I need you to come and get me. So shepherd, would you seek me today? So often we talk about how we need to seek the Lord. But today I wanna to tell you, friend, that you have a shepherd who will leave the 99 to come hunt you down because he loves you that much. I just wanna create a little space right now. Maybe you could close your eyes right where you are and just do some work with the Holy Spirit. Invite him now to come and say, Holy Spirit, would you speak to me right now? Would you help me to apply this message of dependency upon you to my life, all the areas where I've been so self-sufficient, so independent. Lord, I realize that I'm off track. I wonder how many of you would be willing to say that you are like a sheep who has lost their way and you need the shepherd to come and hunt you down. I wonder how many of you would be willing to admit that you've just gotten off track, that there is a, a desire in your heart to be with the shepherd, but somehow you've lost the better way. You know, Jesus is not asking for your partial surrender today. Like, like I'll give you this, but I'm gonna hold on to control of that. That's how we tend to approach God. Like we've got this high capacity, self-sufficient kind of mindset, but he, he doesn't want your partial surrender. He wants full surrender. He wants wholehearted devotion. He wants utter dependence upon him to say, Lord, you can have it all. It's all yours. I need you in every aspect of my life. I'm holding back nothing before you today. Jesus, we give you our lives. We acknowledge our complete and utter dependence upon you. We depend on your favor. We depend on your salvation. We depend on your forgiveness. We depend on your help, on your wisdom. We don't have what it takes in our own strength. We don't have what we need to get through this life in our own self-sufficiency. And so God, would you forgive us for being people who have prideful hearts, who think we can accomplish it without you. God, would you give us a positive Poverty of spirit to acknowledge our great need for you. You are worthy, Lord, and we offer our whole lives as dependent upon you. In the name of Jesus, amen.